Good morning and welcome to today's video. Back on the gravel bike again today, taking it a little bit easier. Yesterday ended up being quite a big one. I ended up doing miles and miles on the fit jig. I'm heading back to James' shop now. I'm gonna film a bit of a Bike Fit Tuesdays. Filmed on a Saturday. <laughs> What are you doing? Just testing a theory. Oh, it's one of those, those things to eat. This is what we were talking about yesterday, wasn't it? So mate, my leg pain is so much better, so much better since we moved my cleats back. Yeah. What are you looking at? Well, we're looking at the difference between the cleat locations and these two shoes. So, and bearing in mind, these two shoes that are right in my hand are a size 38. You see how the one on the right is Almost a set, I'd say, or probably a centimetre further forward. A centimetre is a lot, mate. Well, it is on a 38 size shoe. Smallest, it's one of the smallest sizes you can get. And we found that with you, running the cleat much further back, improved things with your IT band pain. So if you've got IT band pain, could it be that you know, your cleat's too far forward? Is Andy in the um, videos yet? Can we introduce Andy to the viewers? Have you finished eating your lunch yet? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the videos, Andy. People have given up trying to guess who's who's the new person in, working in the shop. Yeah, Andy's a new, new bike fitter. Oh, they've given up? Oh. Yeah. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really make that much of a big deal about it. I was just excited about Andy coming on board to help us out. He's going to be doing some bike fitting. been fitting with me for the last few months. Poor bloke. Been locked away in a, in a room. Oh, what's going on here? We're going to talk about saddles, aren't we? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. What do people want to know about saddles, do you think? This is a saddle. <laughs> it's, it, you, you hold on to it when, you go, when you're riding a bike. I know, don't pedal backwards. <laughs> we, were, we, <laughs> we said we were going to make this informative, not just dick about. When did we say that? Oh. Wait, you sing better than me. Can you do it? Is there such thing as a best one. saddle? Is there, uh, are there are there some saddles that fit people more than others? We quite like pressure relief saddles, uh, mostly because we, I always try and relate things back to a, like a, uh, a primal um, point of view. So if you think about it, we were not intended to not sit on our genitals on a, phone, a hard piece of foam like this, right? In my mind, it makes sense to have a hole in it. A hole in it. Some people can't tolerate the inevitable increase in pressure because I mean, pre when you cut a hole into a saddle, the pressure's got to go somewhere. It doesn't just disappear. So it ends up being redistributed to the skeleton. Some people find that quite difficult to, to, to deal with. So in that case, you know, that's when you end up with you know, something like this. I have people that come in here and they've got like a crate of saddles. They spent a thousand pounds on saddles. You know, they kind of come in here and put it down and go, right, well, you know, which one of these is the best for me? And the answer is, Probably all of them. Double problems are less subjective than they're made out to be. Uh, and I find that there'll be certain saddles that will allow you to compensate slightly better for uh, issues with your existing position, for example. Like, so some saddles, for example, let's take the Arion, are very, very long. So a, a saddle like this will enable you to sit here, 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 all with a reasonable degree of comfort. Should you be moving around though? Not really. Because no. equally, there's saddles which are completely opposite to this, like yeah. the SMPs, yeah, yeah. right? And that locks you in position. Totally. Is there a right and wrong? I wouldn't go as far as to say there's a right or wrong, but what I would say is that what I've come to find is that a rider will sit onto the nose or gravitate to the nose as a result of either the saddle height being too high, because if you think the nose of the saddle is close to the bottom bracket and the tail of the saddle is, but actually what I'm starting to find even more common is excessive reach. You know, due to the nature of the fact that we like to fit stems that resemble a baby's forearm, that tends to result in the rider being excessively stretched out and as a result, they end up sitting on the nose of the saddle. There isn't really a formulaic way of setting up, of, of, of determining what's your right, what the best saddle is for you. Some manufacturers have developed tooling, systematized how to sell a saddle, for example, so it makes it feel a bit more sciencey to to a shop floor for, from a shop floor member of staff. The problem, so what I'm talking about here is these pressure pads that you sit on. Now the issue with this, and the whole, the whole thing is designed to measure your sit bones, all right? And then you obviously, you, you then measure the, measure the distance between the sit bones, and that equals X saddle. The problem with this is that they all measure you sat like this. And you don't sit on the bike like this. Well, Mary Poppins does. <laughs> it's more choosing a saddle than just the width of the thing. Shape has just as much of, uh, just as much importance really as, as, as the width itself. We're selling quite a lot of pro saddles. I'll say. I wish I had a pro saddle. I they think are really essentially good. rip offs of uh, 
certain other brands. And very similar to, uh, I mean, that's specialized Roman, isn't it? Absolutely, very similar to a Roman. And you look at the Griffin, it's very, very similar to a toupee. I, I've actually put this one of these on my open and I've had toupees on all of my bikes. Can't tell the difference. One thing that we should probably talk about is saddle sores. You, me and Loz rode across America 3,000 miles in a month. Not a saddle sore between us. Or even chamois cream. And no chamois cream. So, you know, what does that tell you? The thing with saddle sores is it tends to, it's usually as a result of, well, actually, Lawrence doesn't get saddle sores because he spends most of the time sat on the top tube with one foot unclipped. Filming, filming himself. 50 mile an hour. Um, but no, the, the saddle sore thing, most saddle sores tend to occur on one side. In my experience is usually the left. My experience being when I question people, I don't get saddle sores. It's usually the left hand side, mostly as a result of people listening to the right hand side. Because they're usually the right because hand. They're right, they're right hand and they sit off to one side when the saddle's too high. The point is, saddle sores probably aren't saddle related, they're probably down to the way you're interacting with the saddle rather than the saddle itself. To answer your question, there are some saddle brands that we quite like and we seem to be getting consistently good results. Now, you know, in every fit, I don't go through every single one of these saddles, but Jesus Christ, I haven't got that much time. There are certain saddles that we're starting to flag as being really quite popular. Uh, Pro Turnix and Griffin, which are these two, have a 30 day money back guarantee, pretty awesome. I mean, I, they are so popular that that's my stock of them. Uh, so I carry, I carry a lot, I've got over 100 saddles in stock. Specialized Roman and Toupee. Roman Toupee is a great one. Pro Griffin and Turnix. Specialized Power. A lot of people ride the Power, a lot of people really like it. One of the issues I found with the Power is that even the 143 is still really, really wide. One of the problems, like I said earlier, with, with excessive width is that it tends to force you on the front of the saddle. And with a Power, that, that doesn't exist because no. it's got no nose. So that can cause issues, but if you've, if you've ridden a Power and you like it, I mean, for, for a lot of people, it's the the saddle that they end up on and don't end up having any issues. So, you know, it's, there's, sort of, there's a certain element of trial and error. I really like these fabrics as well. I mean, if you don't like a saddle with a pressure relief channel, um, there are certain individuals, for example, that cannot ride saddles with pressure relief channels. If you think about the fact that a pressure relief channel saddle is designed with, or all saddles, are designed with a specific intention for the human being to sit squarely in them. Now, a human being is, a, is an asymmetrical entity, so that doesn't always occur. And sometimes it's within the jurisdiction of bike fitting, i.e. the saddle's too high so they sit off to one side. Sometimes they have you know, lateral pelvic tilt or they've got uh, some sort of pelvic asymmetry which you know, doesn't enable them to sit squarely in the saddle. Therefore, you end up having to sit on something like this. Um, you know, because some riders will sit rotated. Golfers, rowers, these people are generally pelvic Pelvically disorientated because of a, a you know a history of you know a, an, as, an asymmetrical uh, so sometimes a unilateral non cut outside of work yeah exactly it isn't really a formulated way of doing it but I think the, the real key here is get, get your position checked first before you start going out and spending thousand pounds on saddles we used to do saddle fitting in here it's a waste of time you know even with a pressure mapping system which I have it's complete and utter waste of time because I found most of the time you'd end up you get someone who would come in saddles 30 mil too high the bike's too big they've got no support in the shoes the shoes don't fit them all of these things have massive implications in, in the saddle. So, I'll right, tell you what, let me show you this. From... Oh yeah. Um, that thing, yeah. So, the, the difference with these two images is there's no difference in the position here. Um, there's no difference in the saddle. The only difference is, uh, what actually was the difference? The difference was that this guy had a, a leg length discrepancy stack, leg length stack on his, on a foot, on his shoe when he didn't need it. Um, and you can see that there's like the, there's complete imbalance of pressure here, whereas it gets much better distributed when you remove all this foot correction stuff. And that's not a saddle issue. It's not a saddle issue. So light. It's that progression of so random, light. randomness again, isn't it? What are you doing? It's Jure's. Bike ride on Monday. Ouch. What is that? E.T. Ouch. Smashed it all the way home. No leg pain started raining, so I had to ride fast.